On Thursday, June 13, 2019, Sports Illustrated writer Robert Klimko published a story detailing the disturbing past of former NFL tight end Kellen Winslow II. Details of Winslow's depravity began to trickle out when he was arrested on charges of kidnapping and rape on June 14, 2018. Although Winslow was never accused of any sex-related crimes during his NFL career, sources close to Winslow say that he was never shy to explore the dating pool despite being a married man. He often touted his adulterous one-night stands and was even known to spend his entire off-season living out of his friend's apartment's party. One team official close to Winslow described him this way. He was infantile, just very transparent. With Kellen, everybody knew what he was about. Video games and f***ing. Unfortunately, adultery was just the tip of the iceberg with Winslow. So just how demented was he? To understand the depths of his sociopathic behavior, we have to take an unpleasant look at the testimony from five brave women, each referred to as Jane Doe 1 to 5, for their privacy. The disgraced tight end faced 12 felony and misdemeanor charges stemming from incidents with three women. But in the months since, a number of victims have come forward and the allegations are piling up. To the public, the former Pro Bowl tight end was known as a force both on and off the football field. But his off-color comments, like claiming to be a f***ing soldier, despite never having served in the military, f***ing soldier, and his 2014 drug possession charges, pale in comparison to the harrowing allegations brought to light in Klimko's article. The first of Winslow's despicable acts is alleged to have taken place back in June of 2003 in San Diego, California. Winslow's first victim, known in the recent courtroom proceedings as Jane Doe No. 4, says she met Winslow at a party in a Scripps Ranch townhouse. And although she says her initial encounter with Winslow resulted in consensual sex, she claims that in the middle of the act, one of Winslow's friends walked into the bedroom to watch. That's creepy. Sadly, it gets worse. On June 20, 2003, Jane Doe No. 4 was reportedly raped by Winslow and the peeping Tom while the victim was unconscious. Jane Doe No. 4 testified that when she regained consciousness and opened her eyes, she realized her face was being forced into Winslow's friend's groin area. Her disturbing testimony continued with the following statement. He was holding onto my hair, and I'm pushing with both of my hands to get these guys to stop, and I just keep telling them to stop. After she continued to say stop, Jane Doe 4 claimed Winslow's friend stopped and forced Winslow to stop. Unfortunately, like so many sexual assault cases, it was unreported until the victim made contact with investigators following Winslow's arrest on June 14, 2018. Shortly after, a judge ordered Winslow to stand trial for the raping and kidnapping of two other women. Winslow tried to dismiss the victim's claims, explaining it as a money grab. The psychopath's defense even went as far to cite the recent Me Too movement as a factor in Jane Doe 4's decision to bravely come forward all these years later. A string of other transgressions against women would suggest that Jane Doe 4's stories aren't lies. Rather, they're all too real and have happened often throughout the course of Winslow's life. Let's take a look at the disturbing timeline. March 17, 2018, Jane Doe 1, a 54-year-old woman, was raped when Winslow allegedly pulled over his SUV to pick her up as she was hitchhiking in Encinitas. She hailed a vehicle on Lake Drive and was raped within a mile of where she was picked up, detectives said. May 13, 2018, a 59-year-old woman known as Jane Doe 2 was picked up on Vulcan Avenue in the same SUV and raped along Manchester Avenue, according to a San Diego County Sheriff's detective. May 24, 2018, a 57-year-old woman identified as Jane Doe 3 was gardening at a residence on Lake Drive when Winslow arrived and exposed himself. June 1, 2018, a 71-year-old woman was home when a man came through the back door of her house. Although the woman claimed to not feel threatened by the man, this is obviously some pretty sketchy behavior. June 7, 2018, Winslow was finally arrested at his Encinitas home on suspicion of residential burglary. Law enforcement officials would go on to allege that Winslow had entered a senior community in Encinitas on that same day, intending to rape an 86-year-old woman who was sleeping inside of her home. Winslow's publicist, Denise White, sent a statement to NBC stating that the incident was just a misunderstanding and that Winslow dropped by the mobile home park to look at homes for his mother-in-law before heading to a nearby gym. But I mean, at this point, you kind of have to acknowledge the context of the situation. On July 13, 2018, Winslow was released on $2 million bail. 
October 15, 2018, Winslow was finally ordered to stand trial for raping Jane Doe number four, who was 17 years old and attending Escondido High School at the time of the alleged crime. February 13, 2019, somehow it continues to get more up. A 77-year-old woman identified as Jane Doe 5 said Winslow approached her at Crunch Fitness in Carlsbad and touched himself. She went on to say he had his legs open and was touching his penis and he was just kind of stroking or something like that. He reportedly left and returned sometime later where he began to display an erection while doing stretches next to Jane Doe 5. This is what she testified. He scurried away when she reprimanded. February 22, 2019, just a couple of weeks later, Jane Doe 5 was again allegedly approached by Winslow, this time with just a towel wrapped around his waist. He entered the hot tub where she sat alone. The woman said the man unmistakably began masturbating a few feet away from him. February 28, 2019, Winslow, who was out on $2 million bail, was ordered to remain on house arrest, an order he promptly disregarded. March 5, 2019, Winslow was ordered back into custody by a San Diego judge following two new sexual assault allegations that took place while he was supposed to be on house arrest. The defendant was accused of touching himself on two occasions in front of Jane Doe 5 at a Carlsbad gym. May 22, 2019, Jane Doe 2 testified in court. She said that when she got in the car with Winslow, the psychopath said, I'll choke you to death or I'll murder you. The woman said there were no marks on her neck after the alleged assault and that she didn't report the assault until the next day because she was afraid. May 23, 2019, Jane Doe 3 testified that she was cutting flowers and Winslow appeared at first clothes before exposing his penis to her. June 10, 2019, the jury sent a note to the judge indicating they've reached a decision for four of the 12 counts. The note read, as of 1.55 p.m. on 6 10 19, the jury has come to a decision on four of the 12 counts. Winslow was found guilty on one count of rape against Jane Doe 2, indecent exposure involving Jane Doe 3, and one count of lewd conduct involving Jane Doe 5. Winslow was found not guilty of a second count of lewd conduct involving Jane Doe 5. His publicist shamelessly continues to back Winslow too, consistently stating that she believes he's innocent. She went on record saying, I've seen him grow from a young boy into a man, and I know his secrets, like when he dated multiple women or was late to a meeting, and they weren't dressed. Now, it's hard to imagine that Winslow was somehow able to keep this malicious, antisocial behavior under wraps during his nine-year career. In light of recent events, former teammates, executives, and coaches have started to speak out about the depraved, sexually deviant behavior they witnessed spending time with Winslow while he was in the NFL. From the get-go, in Cleveland, all the way through his final NFL season with the 2013 New York Jets, Winslow was that guy. Although describing him as that guy may be doing Winslow a service he doesn't deserve. He was reportedly a compulsive masturbator and worshipped porn religiously. It got to the point that he always had an empty seat next to him on any team flight because he had a ritual that involved watching hardcore porn on his portable DVD player, according to two former teammates. Now take a second to put this in a typical workplace environment. Think of your cubicle at your office. Think of the guy that sits next to you. Now imagine that he needs to have the entire row cleared so he can spank it. The stories are countless. On one occasion, an equipment manager, who had the misfortune of delivering the tight end his gear at his locker, walked in to find Kellen Winslow masturbating at his stall. His porn addiction ran deep. During row games, the assistant coaches responsible for enforcing curfew often found him masturbating. His teammates, as you can imagine, all dreaded having Winslow assigned as their roommate on road trips. Teammates reportedly pleaded with team officials to get out of sharing hotel rooms with Winslow because he would watch porn and masturbate it openly, like no one was even there. Because of Winslow's exceptional talent, and perhaps because of his dad's status in the NFL, the organizations he played for constantly made attempts to rehabilitate him. Former Browns head coach Romeo Cornell and former Browns assistant Terry Rubisky sought Winslow out and made a concerted effort to mentor him and reset his expectations of what appropriate human behavior is. Apparently, this was all before Cornell even became aware of his players' pleas for new room assignments, meaning that his day-to-day -day behavior was just that strange. When Winslow got to Tampa Bay, his strange behavior began to escalate. He acquired a life-size silicone mold of a woman's torso one that left little to the imagination and was, let's say, functional. This toy of Winslow's was not just for the privacy of his own home either. 
The tight end would bring it on all road trips, openly carrying it on team flights. There's no way around it. Kellen Winslow Jr. is a bad, bad guy. He's a rapist and he's a sexual deviant who lives his life with no regard for other people. His dad is a Hall of Fame tight end who by all accounts is a great guy and his son seemed to have a comfortable childhood. So the sad question that arises is why? Why is Kellen Winslow Jr. taking part in all of these heinous acts? There's been much speculation surrounding just that question. Those close to him believe he's suffering from the effects of CTE, a disease common amongst former football players. Now it is possible that the horrible disease is playing a role in his despicable behavior. But Robert Cantu, professor of neurology and neurosurgery at Boston University, dismissed the notion that Winslow should be given any sort of pass saying, quote, CTE will bring out genetic problems and make them much worse. However, you have to balance that with this. The overwhelming majority of people who commit the kind of acts that Kellen Winslow is alleged to have committed didn't play football in the NFL. CTE wasn't why they did what they did, end quote. At the end of the day, Winslow is a narcissist with sociopathic tendencies who cares about no one but himself. It's possible he has a compulsive sexual behavior disorder but it's no excuse. Winslow ruined the lives of at least five women and who knows how many more. So let's just hope when the trial resumes that Winslow is found guilty for the rest of his charges and he spends a long, long time in a prison where he belongs.